Hello friends! In today's video, I have 10 super fun Zoom games for kids that no one else has ever talked about before. I am so excited to share them with you. If you are also excited to see them, please give this video a thumbs up <laughs> and subscribe. If you think about subscribing, if we are meeting for the first time, hi, my name is Sean. Welcome on this channel. I am passionate about bringing back family fun one game at a time. If, as I'm talking about these games, you have an idea that you would like to share with this community that has worked well for your group of students, I would love for you to put that in the comment section down below because I would love for this channel to be a resource of game and activity ideas for all 24,000 of my subscribers looking for content like this. So I would love to see the comment section become like a collective brain community where we share our ideas. All right, so the first idea is coming at you right now. The first Zoom game idea I have for you is called True or False. To play this game, you're going to need three sheets of paper, one red, one green, and one yellow. And before you play, you need to create a list of facts. These facts could be silly facts or they could relate to the topic that you are teaching on. So I'm going to use vocabulary as an example. Before you begin playing the game, but as you are addressing your students, hold up each of the colors of your paper to your class and ask your kids, your students, your players, <laughs> to go and find an object of this color. So they're going to need a green object, a yellow object, and a red object. Once all of your players have their objects, you can begin the game. Call out a word and give a definition to the word. Now here's the tricky part. The definition could be the true definition or it could be a false definition. Players will respond by holding up one of their objects. So if it's red, if they hold up their red objects, object, that means the definition is false. It does not go with the vocabulary word. If they hold up a green object, that means yes, the definition matches the vocabulary word. And if they hold up the yellow object, then that means they don't know. <laughs> So it kind of gives them an out. You could assign point values or just simply use this game as a review. Game idea number two is like or dislike. Yeah, that's the name of the game. This game works great as an icebreaker or a brain break. Players will need two sheets of paper and a writing utensil. And the Zoom host or the teacher of the class will need this handy thumbs up cut out. You could get this one and the pack of emojis that I'll leave in the description box down below, or you could print your own. Ask your players to draw a happy face on one side of the paper and a sad face on the other side of the paper. The Zoom host will call out a word. It could be a food, an activity, or an animal. Players will respond with their sheet of paper, whether they like, <laughs> the word or they dislike the word. So they'll hold up the smiley face if they like the word and their frowny face paper if they dislike the word. And as I said, this game works great as an icebreaker or a brain break. The next game is called Goats in the Grass. You may have heard me talk about this game one time before on a previous video that had nothing to do with Zoom. This is an alphabet and alliteration game. The Zoom host starts off with the first letter of the alphabet, which we all know is the letter A, and then gives a location that has the same letter A. For example, ants in Antarctica. Then the Zoom host or the teacher will say the name of a, another player and that player has to name something with the letter B. B's in the boat. <laughs> that sounds awful. That sounds like an awful thing to happen if you had a bunch of bees and you were stuck in a boat. Then that player names another player and that player does the letter C and of course you go through the entire alphabet. So you can finish the game with the letter Z or you can finish when all players have had a turn. The next game is called Canary. To play this game, every player will need a yellow object. The Zoom host will read a statement from my Can You Name It worksheet right here. My worksheet is a list of clever phrases that lead you to guess a word that has 
the word can in it, like canary. If a player knows the word that goes along with the phrase, they will hold up their yellow object. If that player gets the answer correct, they get a point. If they get it wrong, then the Zoom host calls the name of another player holding up a yellow object. And the winner is determined by whoever has the most points at the end of the game. The next game is called Hats. Every player will need a hat to play this game. The Zoom host will need a set amount of numbered cards. They'll need the same number as however many players you have on your Zoom call. And a blindfold. The Zoom host will also need a blindfold. Before playing, the Zoom host will assign all players a number. And all players begin with their hat off their head. The Zoom host will blindfold themselves and pick a number from the numbered cards, hold it up in front of all of the players so that everybody on the Zoom call, except for the host, can see what number the card is. The player with that number is going to disguise their voice and say, the Zoom host then has to guess who spoke. Who was the player that said hats off to you? If the Zoom host guesses the person correctly, then that person is out of the game. If the Zoom host gets that player correct, then that player gets to put on their hat. Then the Zoom host picks another number with the blindfold on and you go through the same process of elimination. Continue playing until all the numbers have been picked. Now through this whole time, the Zoom host is wearing the blindfold. At not any point during this game does the Zoom host take off their blindfold. So they're not gonna know if they got the name of a player correct and they're not gonna be able to see who is wearing their hat. Continue playing until all numbers have been picked. When all numbers have had a turn, the Zoom host will then remove their blindfold and see who is wearing hats. All the players wearing hats win the game. This next game is called Color Wars. So the way you play is the Zoom host will hold up a color. So let's hold up red. They're gonna hold up an object. So you could hold up a red piece of paper, or you could hold up a red apple, and all players have seven seconds to type in chat one object that begins with that color. So they could type in an apple. But don't hit send. Don't send your answer in. When the Zoom host says seven seconds are up, then everybody will submit their answers in the chat. If a player typed in an incorrect answer, they are eliminated from the game and you go on to round two with those remaining. So you could pick up, say, green. You could pick up a green object. You don't even have to say green. You could say green, you know, pick up a green object, baby Yoda. <laughs> and everybody has to type in another object that is also green. You go through all rounds until there is only one player remaining and that player is the winner. To play apples and bananas, you're gonna need an apple and you're gonna need a banana. This is a very ripe banana. <laughs> I probably should eat this today. It's at the end of its life cycle. The Zoom host will read a statement and ask players, are you an apple? or are you a banana? Okay, let me explain a little bit more. Players will need to also have a red object and a yellow object. It doesn't have to be an apple or a banana. Any, any object of these same two colors, they will need to play. For example, the Zoom host will say, do you prefer the beach or the mountains? If players prefer the beach, they will hold up their red object. If they prefer the mountains, they will hold up their yellow object. Another example would be cake or cookies. If you prefer cake, hold up your red object. If you prefer cookies, hold up your yellow object. This next game is called How Many Times? To play this game, all players will need little pieces of paper that are numbered one through nine. The Zoom host will begin the game by performing an action. Now this game requires players, kids, students to really focus, to pay attention to what the teacher is doing. This is a great game to kind of play in a brain break where you need to bring all of your students back together and help them focus in a fun way. 
players guess or count how many times the action was performed. So do you know how many times I touched my nose just a little bit ago? If you know the answer, put it in the comment section down below. But if we were playing on Zoom, students would hold up that number for everyone to see. The Zoom host then picks a player who had the correct number and that player gets to perform an action a certain number of times between one and nine and then the other players hold up their number that they to see if they got it correctly and the game continues until all players have had a turn or until your brain break is over. Before you begin your game, ask your players to gather one object of all the colors in the rainbow. Roy G. Biv, we all remember this. The Zoom host will show a series of colors. I would start off with three or four colors only. And the Zoom host will ask the players to repeat the color sequence using the objects that they have. In this order, the sequence would be yellow, red, green. And so the players would need to align up their objects in this exact order. If they can't remember the pattern, they are eliminated. And then you would go on to the next sequence or pattern. Now you don't have to play this game as an elimination game. If you are trying to teach your, your students or your kids sequencing or patterns, then just have them play along and play as many rounds as you have time for. For this next game, every player will need a spoon and a box of cereal. This is a minute to win it game for Zoom. Every player will put the spoon in their mouth and see how many pieces of cereal they can stack, they can fit in their spoon. Now the catch is they can only put one piece of cereal at a time onto the spoon. When the timer is up, whoever has the most pieces of cereal wins the game. Now if you have more than one winner, you can play the game again, but shorten the amount of time. Give students only 30 seconds <laughs> to balance cereal. Before I talk about the last game, I would love for you to consider subscribing to this channel. I post new videos all about in-person games as well as Zoom games twice a week. Now on my channel, we have talked about collaborative coloring before, where we've taken a color sheet and we've colored it together using the annotation tools within Zoom. Now I just recently found a new channel called Chad Littlefield, that's his name as well as the name of his channel. Chad Littlefield, and I love focusing on the art of connection, in particular the art of remote connection. Uh, one, because 2020 and 2021, and two, because pixels are never going away, right? And I highly recommend you go check it out after watching this video. I will leave his channel in the description box down below of this video. But he has something called Start Art. Start Art. Which is basically a collaborative coloring mural that you do on Zoom. And I think it's a fantastic idea. Now he does have his own coloring sheet printables that you can find on his website that are linked to his video that are super cool. I don't know, this is kind of cool. And I'm thinking about coming up with my own, but a more kid version. But what I love about Start Art is that everybody is working together to create a piece of art. They can choose, everybody can choose their own colors and you color where the dots are located. And then a phrase pops out from the work of art. Just a cool way to get all of the kids and the students together, creating a piece of art together via Zoom annotation tools. So if you have that access to that feature in your classroom or with your students, then I highly recommend Start Art. I will see you in my next video. Thanks for watching.